encounter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this opportunity again. Grant us grace, grant us illumination, even by your spirit, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I believe in the word of God and I believe in its power to change. I believe that the word of God transforms men first and foremost by introducing to them a new vista, a new plane of sight. One of the assignments of scripture is to cause the hearts of men to be flooded with light and to cause that men would see. Hallelujah. And um, according to Ephesians, the, when Paul was teaching the church in Ephesus, he began to pray that God would cause that they would encounter the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, their hearts being flooded with light that they may know conferences like this i've said it earlier and i will repeat again it's an opportunity for an encounter with the word um, more than just the power of god the assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word of god is not a lie so without the word of god the anointing has no ministry the anointing is a validator are we together now when the word of god comes now it activates the ministry of the anointing the anointing comes to prove the validity of the things that have been spoken praise the lord i'm teaching along the lines of your team and just to share a few things and um charge our hearts this morning even as touching sonship the bible says in john chapter 5 let's start with john 5 john chapter 5 begin our reading from verse 10 John chapter 5 so this was a miracle Jesus was healing someone here and it led to a discussion that would introduce what I'm about to share now the Bible says the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured it is the Sabbath day it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed we're reading to 18 and he answered and said he that made me whole the same said unto me take up your bed and walk then asked they him what man is that which said unto you take up your bed and walk and he that was healed wist not who it was for jesus had conveyed himself away a multitude being in that place afterwards jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him behold thou art made whole sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you the man departed and told the jews that it was jesus which had made him whole 16 and therefore did the jews persecute jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the sabbath day two more verses 17 but jesus answered them and said pay attention now my father walketh hitherto and i walk therefore the jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the sabbath but he said also that god was his father making himself equal with god that god was his father making himself equal with god the subject of sonship is one that is not new as far as um, the body of christ is concerned i think across boards we've had people conferences discuss extensively over the subject of sonship i believe to the intent that believers would mature and become strong because the bible says an heir for as long as he's a child he says he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all so men and women of god across this nation africa and the globe have spent time written books held conferences 
in an attempt to challenge the body of christ to rise and grow into maturity and sonship in fact the bible says in romans chapter 8 when you read from verse 18 paul was speaking he says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of god hallelujah apostle john was speaking in his epistle and he said behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us in that we be called the sons of god then he says now are we the sons of god and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like so the subject of sonship is scattered all through scripture especially the new testament but i think that um, my reservation remains that the the protocol of sonship and and um the dynamics of really functioning in sonship has not been dealt with to the degree that would help the believer work experientially so we have a lot of theoretical understanding about sonship but are not able to work in reality and you see the 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 way the gospel was designed is such that we not only hear we hear and see are we together now the things that we have heard the things that we have seen then the things that our hands have handled even of the word of life that is what we preach in acts chapter 8 when you begin to read from verse 5 the bible says and philip went down to samaria the bible says he preached christ unto them the next verse is very instructive the bible says the people with one accord they gave heed to those things which philip spake hearing and seeing not hearing alone hearing and seeing hearing opens up your heart to believe the possibilities that you are receiving as a proposal but now you can step into it so that it becomes your experience in john chapter 3 when you read from verse 3 this was a discourse between jesus and nicodemus he came to him by night and he said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these miraculous things except god be with him jesus replies and says verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again notice now he cannot see the kingdom then when we get to verse 5 jesus now says except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter there is seeing the kingdom there is entering the kingdom you can see from afar like moses saw from afar but he never entered into that experience so my intention this morning is that in addition to all of the teachings that you would have received to just guide us by the spirit to be able to step into the experience of sonship if you're in agreement please say amen, amen. hallelujah now um the way the way we study scripture to be able to derive maximum benefit is generally speaking may i say this that the bible scripture as we know contains there are three expressions of god and the realities of the kingdom that are captured in scripture so that every time you open the bible you are having an encounter with three dimensions of spiritual reality number one the promises of god the first thing you encounter every time you open scripture the bible is a compendium of the promises of god number two the principles of the kingdom they are called the mysteries of the kingdom the modus operandi of the kingdom that means when you study the principles of the kingdom it helps you to understand jesus the way the way the kingdom operates jesus said in matthew 13 i believe verse 11 it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom a mystery is a hidden code of operation that is privy to a group of people 
like the military people for instance they have certain languages and certain expressions that you have to be a military man for that expression to profit you is that true so the kingdom the bible contains promises the boundary of god's commitments to the believer listen you must understand that god is ever committed to the believer but there are rules to his commitment he is not committed arbitrarily he's only committed within the provisions that scripture allows so in as much as god is mighty in as much as god is great he cannot commit himself to the believer outside of the jurisdiction of scripture is that true yes the bible says he has exalted his word even above his reputation above his name so the promises of god they represent the boundary of god's commitment to us number two the principles of the kingdom and then number three prophecies there is a prophetic dimension to the scripture it gives us a revelation of the things to come now here's what the bible says in romans chapter 15 and verse 4 i believe it says the things that are written are for time that they are written for our learning that means the bible expects that we be students so that we through the patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope hallelujah it means that when we begin to explore scriptures one of the ways that we draw spiritual lessons is to go back and study how things happened in the past and then the bible says they are written for our learning the lord will help us in the name of jesus there are two dimensions to sonship as revealed from scripture many expressions of sonship but two of them principally um, suffice for our discussion this morning hallelujah the first dimension of sonship is sonship through natural descent what we call descendants that means people who are connected to a family a father and a mother by natural descent by blood an example of this is found in genesis chapter 15 and verse 5 let's let's look at a few scriptures before i begin to teach genesis chapter 15 and verse 5 the bible says he brought forth abraham now and he told him look towards heaven can you tell the stars if you are if you are able to number them and he said so shall thy seed be one of the versions will say so shall thy descendants be that means there are people who would come directly from your loins now the word son uh, it comes from there are many expressions like i said but the hebrew word that we're, we're particularly interested in is called ben b-e-n and the greek is huios hallelujah this does not mean a male like gender it is a generic expression an attempt to show one who has the same nature or one who has the same quality with are we together now so when we are talking about sonship we're not necessarily talking about male or female according to this expression a son is one who by whatever means has been able to sustain the same nature are we together so we're saying that it is possible to carry the genetics of an individual by natural descent many people here are family people your parents you have children most times the children would look like one or both of the parents sometimes with very striking semblance is that true yes natural descent that a man can become a son by natural descent and then number two by adoption the second way that sonship is established as revealed from scripture is by adoption romans chapter 8 and verse 5 a classic scripture about sonship that comes by and through adoption the bible says romans chapter 8 did i get that the spirit of adoption just a moment to clarify hallelujah the bible says that we have been given the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father can you help me find that scripture please hallelujah so the believers we we 
huh? 15 not 5 thank you we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear somebody say amen. amen but we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father do you know what that means that the spirit of adoption legitimizes our calling god father you have no right to walk up to another person who um, you are not his seed by natural descent and call him father. But he's saying there is still another route that can make sonship possible. It's called adoption. An example of this, we see that there had been sonship through adoption in scripture. I wrote down three or four of them. We're not considering the scripture just to buttress my point. Number one, we see an example between Pharaoh's daughter and Moses. Moses was not her biological child, but she raised him and played that parental role. Number two, we see Eli and Samuel in scripture. Is that true? Yes. Eli and Samuel. Number three, we see Mordecai and Esther as revealed in the book of Esther. Number four, we see Joseph and Jesus. Joseph was not the natural father of Jesus, yet he was encouraged to take full responsibility and he played that fatherly role so it is possible to have sonship by natural descent bloodline or sonship by adoption hallelujah generally i told you that the concept of sonship has to do with the relationship of an offspring to the parent that means the moment you mention son there has to be father and father dear again in this context does not just mean the male parent the word father comes from the word abba a double b a abba means the source the originator it means the sustainer it also means the defender it is usually used for men but not limited to men abba means my source my sustainer my defender are we still together Praise the name of the Lord. So the Bible lets us know that there is such a concept as sonship in scripture. And that for the believer in Christ, our sonship is by adoption. John chapter 3 and verse 16 reads, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. As at the time this was being carried out, Jesus was the only begotten of the Father. Is that true? But now we know that he's no longer the only begotten. He is the first of we, the begotten. We have been brought by the spirit of adoption. He is now the firstborn among many brethren. So we can call God Father. Someone call him Father. In fact, Jesus said it this way. He says, when you pray, approach prayer with this understanding. Our Father. So he lets you know you are not the only child. Our father. My source, my sustainer, my defender. My source, my sustainer, my defender. I can dwell all day just discussing this. Because when you come to him acknowledging that he is source, there are no plan B. Lord, it is either you or I don't have any options. You are my source. Every time you say Abba, you put pressure on the integrity of the one who says he is Abba. Are we together now? Yes. Because the hallmark of fatherhood is the benevolence to communicate responsibility. Not just procreation. If ye being evil, know how to give good gifts. How much more your heavenly father. So the real proof of fatherhood according to scripture is the aptness to assume responsibility. If you are not assuming responsibility, no matter how many children you have, according to Bible definition, you are not Abba. You are a matured male who can procreate, but you are not father. hallelujah are we still together many people desire to walk in the power of god many people desire to rise to the height of their spiritual experiences many people desire to live lives that are meaningful 
and impactful every time we find a person and a people who seem to live a life that is above average we become very intentional about expressing our admiration and so on and so forth but the bible lets us know that in christ everyone has that advantage to live a life that is superior please listen a life that is superior all wise and the secret to it in truth is sonship sonship that is clearly understood i want you to please lend me your attention now as i begin to teach because knowing then that sonship attempts to define your relationship between you and the father in this case god the father there are demands to sonship before we begin to understand the dynamics of the power that comes with sonship i think the most important in my opinion the most important aspect of sonship is understanding the demand and this is where i think believers sometimes make mistakes because we claim a lot of spiritual truths without searching for the demands the demands that are involved in making it happen are we together now there are demands to sonship and there are three of them i wrote down here and i pray that you lend me your attention number one the first demand of true sonship according to scripture you want to manifest as a son indeed the first biblical demand is followership 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 matthew chapter 4 we'll read from verse 17 to 20 matthew chapter 4 from verse 17 to 20 the bible says from that time jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand next verse please and jesus walking by the sea of galilee saw two brethren notice they were called brethren never called disciples never called apostles they were called brethren the bible says simon called peter and andrew his brother casting their net into the sea for they were fishers what happened jesus said unto them i want to turn you from being brethren to becoming sons disciples and even apostles of the lamb but here is the price follow me not follow it follow me and i will make you it is the responsibility of abba to make it is your responsibility to follow he only makes those who follow he does not make those who want to be made there is no true father that just makes champions out of people arbitrarily it is at the the instance of your determination to follow the first demand of true sonship as revealed from scripture is followership let me tell you this followership is very costly followership will demand adaptation followership will demand it will cost you your time your resources but then that is the price of true followership first corinthians 11 and verse 1 first corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1 paul was bold enough to say this be ye followers of me even as i also am of christ in other words i did not just become the apostle by luck i submitted myself to followership and i desire that you be like me i would have to submit you to the same pattern follow me follow me means be willing to adopt my ideologies follow me means that you must be willing to declare your disloyalty to any ideology and pattern that is inferior we usually are emotionally connected to our way of life our our view our uh the way we know things to be followership does not just mean walk along with me followership means be willing to buy into my philosophy be willing to buy into my understanding here's how the bible puts it philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus the proof the true proof of followership is that there is a pouring in of the ideology of that father into the son 
are we together now you are not a true follower if you are resistant to receiving the ideology that comes from the father to you so many people claim they are followers followers of god and followers of men but with time we do not see that pouring in look at the disciples they walked with jesus and followed to a point where they could not even deny their being with jesus they looked at peter and said your face looks familiar he tried to lie and it didn't work that was the the level of his followership they they knew that this were a select group of people they had worked with jesus everything about their lives had changed let me tell you this you know you are following when you are not you, do you know you can follow so powerfully that even your physical expression will begin to look like who and what you are following because the bible says as we behold him as in a mirror is a law it says we are changed into what we are beholding hallelujah the price of followership many people desire to be sons indeed sons of god and even sons connected to many visions but they are not true followers a follower does not tamper with the equation followership is a risk it is based on trust that i trust the person who is leading me and i don't need to understand everything before i take a move you see this this scientific approach to christianity is why many people never see the power of god because there are times your mind will have to follow later on you have to just go with god blindly trusting that he is abba abba means that the thoughts that i think towards you are thoughts of peace and not of evil i don't have to give you every explanation trust me is the mission you know that i've told you if you can trust me we live in a world where we are obsessed with guarantees we want a guarantee for everything let me tell you very sad news there are no guarantees in this life the only guarantee is your connection to the integrity of this god he took out time from genesis to revelation unashamedly making a manifesto of his integrity to the end that you will believe him can i tell you this god can be trusted he is abba not just the creator of the ends of the earth it takes a childlike approach to followership when you become excessively scientific when you put your ego on the line you will create you will aberrate that equation with all kinds of fears and emotional things god says go this way you say okay god how do i do it now am i just follow if it be thou bid me come and peter said he told him come and he got up and he began to walk immediately everybody say in the name of jesus i receive grace to follow mm. i can tell you followership is costly when you read i think it's matthew 19 and um 19 27 let's look at it matthew 19 we're still looking at followership a time came when they be they became frustrated you know why i love the bible it doesn't really hide anything it records frustrations it records everything so that we will know that this thing was not just doctor to hide something about god these guys had followed jesus for about three years now and their frustrations were becoming palpable it started quietly they were discussing among themselves where are we really going where is this man taking us one time they attempted to shine without him and they were so disappointed they tried to pray for the epileptic patient you remember at least just to find consolation that this thing was working and they were utterly disappointed and jesus acted as if he didn't see what was happening with them now they got to a point where they said we have to confront this man we left everything to follow him here's what they said peter said unto him behold let me get your attention jesus we have forsaken all this is the price of followership you don't just follow you have to forsake something to follow can i tell you you are a true follower when you let me see what you gave up if you did not give up anything you are not a genuine follower we have forsaken all and followed thee what shall we have 
therefore jesus did not say you are lying they truly did they forsook their ambition they forsook their ego they forsook whatever it is and they began to follow come follow me and i will make you come follow me and i will lead you there are many people who do not want to follow genuinely because they are still connected to yesterday and yet they want to step into tomorrow you have to choose one of the two either to remain with yesterday or become so disloyal to yesterday as a proof of your determination to enter tomorrow yesterday and tomorrow will not go together this one thing i do he says forgetting the things that are behind i press towards the mark of the high calling in christ is god speaking to someone maybe this is a prophetic word for someone you've held on to yesterday too long whether your achievement or your failure they can cause the same thing your downfall both good and bad can still destroy you depending on what you do with them the achievements of yesterday can make you so complacent that you may not make progress for tomorrow. The failure of yesterday can make you so fearful that you will not want to move again. Someone in this service has to make up your mind that I am truly willing to follow and to follow all the way. Follow. The first price of true sonship is followership. When I started with God, I burned the bridges behind me completely. No plan to build them. God, I will follow you. Complete, total followership. Abraham, come out of your father's house. Let me show you how God makes great people. Come out to a land I will show you. God, does it not have a name? Just follow me. There are many details you will not get when you begin to walk with God. Believe me when I tell you this. Don't be ashamed if you can't give everybody the full picture. It's not lack of vision. God ministers to us in seasons. Are we together now? Yeah. So you can get to a point in your life where the mission becomes follow me. And keep following. And keep following. Lord is 10 years. Where are we going? Follow me. And then you will turn back and find out that God has so elevated you to a position of honor, a position of glory, a position of grace. Second prize, very quickly. The second prize of followership is the prize, the, the prize of sonship is the prize of total dependence. I'm about to say something that will disturb you in this kingdom independence is rebellion in this kingdom the proof of maturity is your ability to submit yourself totally to depend on god and to depend on authority john 5 let's start from verse 17 then we'll jump to 19 then we'll jump to 30. john 5 verse 17 listen to jesus remember this same jesus we're talking about apostle john when he started his, his synoptic account he traced jesus from his divinity and he said in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was with god in the beginning so he made it clear that this one you are talking about was with god in the beginning but hear what jesus had to say do you know Jesus, when he walked on the earth, he never called himself father. Jesus, you will not find any mention of Jesus calling himself father. Total dependence, the cost for true sonship. Here's what Jesus said. But Jesus answered them, my father walketh hitherto and I walk. That means I have to depend on what he is doing. To find meaning and even walk here look how vulnerable and helpless he's sounding as though it's not jesus talking go to verse 19 then jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you ah the son can do nothing of himself are we bible people the son 
can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the father do for what things soever he doeth this also doeth the son likewise everybody say dependence do you know how embarrassing it is for an adult to admit this that you are that helpless that you draw your creativity entirely from a source higher than you humans are proud people it's not very easy to sit down and make yourself look so weak after school after knowledge gaining knowledge gaining whatever it is jesus walks upon the earth and it looks like he's he's making he's making a mockery of his pedigree i can do nothing i have to depend on my father that is sonship i can of my own self verse 30 do nothing jesus you can of your own self do nothing the word as i hear i judge and my judgment is just because i seek not my own will but the will of the father which had sent me I'm, jesus did not just manifest because he was jesus i'm showing you the protocol because he came as the pattern man so that we look up to him he left the pattern for us generally in this kingdom the moment you want to see the glory of god the glory of god meaning any dimension and any expression of god in your life there are patterns that forerun the glory the patterns of god forerun his glory whenever you see the manifestation of the glory of god in a life in a place it is proof that his patterns have been honored if you see the glory of god in a man's life financially it is proof that his patterns have been honored you see the glory of god in, in maybe supernatural power anointing every time you see the manifestation of god's glory it is proof that his patterns have been adhered to he told moses ensure that you build according to pattern if it's my glory that tabernacle will host then it has to be according to pattern hallelujah total dependence total dependence that you depend on him for strength you depend on him for wisdom you depend on him for everything can you imagine how sarcastic jesus was do you know that age-wise some of the disciples were older than jesus from the age standpoint and yet he looks at them and says little children have you any catch what, what sort of a state? Who are you? What is that what God taught you? This is how you, you came from heaven to show us this pattern? <laughs> Do you have the maturity and the stamina to be dependent? Don't you know that dependence is strength indeed? John 21. Let me show you something Jesus said. John 21. Let's start from verse 15. Mm. jesus said to simon simon son of jonas lovest thou me more than this he was probing into his love life let's go to verse 17 that's what i'm looking for something in verse 17 he said feed my sheep 18 verily verily i say unto you please look up if you're a christian when thou was young thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest but when thou shalt be old thou shalt stretch forth thy hands and another shall gird thee and carry thee where thou wouldest not that means the proof of maturity and stamina in this kingdom is when you can reach out and allow another hold your hand and lead you sometimes even to places you do not want to go There is a story in the Bible in Luke chapter 15. Now is a good time to start that story. From verse 11. A core lesson before I now wrap up with the power that is in sonship. 
comes from this story it is the most classic expression of fatherhood and sonship a parable given by jesus himself the bible says in fact when the bible says there was a certain man it means it actually happened is that true now follow the story he said a certain man had two sons how many sons whoever has sons is called what father is that true so this father had two sons you know the story of the prodigal son is so powerful because it shows us what happens when you are under the influence of fatherhood what happens when you rebel and how to come back if you so wish very beautiful rendition it it leaves it leaves you with the option of choosing by showing you putting together many actions versus the consequences that follow now let's learn from scripture the younger of them said to his father give me the portion of goods that followed to me and he divided and he divided unto them his living watch this the first mistake that this man made was that he switched from stewardship to ownership in this kingdom owners are rebels we do not own anything in this kingdom ownership is proof of rebellion right from genesis you may freely eat but it is not yours first corinthians chapter 4 when you read from verse 1 and 2 the bible says let a man so account of us as stewards you know faithful ministers and stewards of the mysteries of god verse 2 says moreover first corinthians 4 verse 2 now moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful the reason why many of us today respectfully speaking are depressed and going through all kinds of things is because we have assumed a responsibility that was not within our job description ownership is costly you do not have the power to be an owner owner means you have to maintain god relieved you from the burden of maintenance by making you a steward now let me when i say ownership of course physically we have things trusted to us and we must work i mean ownership in terms of the responsibility of your life that there are so many things you cannot do and god said leave ownership to me the earth is the lord's hold on hold on hold on hold on don't rush don't rush there are four things that makes anyone lord for you to be lord according to that scripture you must have dominion and absolute control over four things number one the earth number two the resources called the fullness number three the mindset that governs that territory and then number four the inhabitants whoever has this must be lord then the ultimate test of lordship is that whoever owns the earth must be able to exit himself and come back by himself every other king who claimed to be lord when he died he did not have the power to come back are you seeing now because you see according to the law of territory when you exit this earth you can't bring yourself back it will take someone who is in the earth to call you back if you must come and here is jesus no mortal man was calling him back in prayer no which is a violation to the law because for everyone who rose from the dead there was somebody a human person with a body who called him even jesus called lazarus is that true now who called jesus back that was proof that he was lord the man who can exit the earth and return back that's not what i'm teaching i just thought to just just drum that scripture it was while he was coming back that this statement came lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors that the king of glory and the gate said no we are not used to this there is nobody who is authorizing that entrance and they asked the question who is this king of glory question this was the reply who is this king of glory question the reply was the lord he never said god 
the Lord. Lord means absolute owner. The Lord who is strong and mighty. The Lord who is mighty in battle. And the gates opened. And he came with honor and dignity. And he arose. We are getting there when we talk about the power. Where your topic is coming from. Because when you really understand the power that sons carry. You will see that walking in the supernatural is not just privy to a group of people. You can never truly be a blessing when you are not supernatural. It's not about being anointed. It's about a commitment to being a blessing. So dependence dependence something happened to jacob that is a lesson jacob walked with god to a point where god named himself after jacob now let me tell you this one of the ways god honors men is to name himself after them the god of abraham the god of isaac that is not a gift that is a reward that a man can so walk with god that he will have a personal name it's a depth of relationship and captured in that name will be a dimension of god that every time it is invoked god will act in a certain way as a memorial to that person are you getting what i'm teaching now yes the manifestation of the god of abraham is not the same as the god of isaac it's not the same as the God of Jacob. No. So Jacob is about to teach us how he was able to secure that level of intimacy with God. In chapter 28, the Bible says he came to a place called Luz to sleep. And when he lay down on a stone, he had a dream and he saw a ladder that was connecting the heavens and the earth. Angels ascending and descending. At the top of it was God himself. And he began to speak and tell him prophetically about his destiny. Jacob woke up from his vision and he said, Surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, This must be the house of God, you know, the gate of heaven and so on and so forth. And he was careless with that encounter. Next scene, he would pay the price for 20 years in Laban's house for trivializing such an encounter now in chapter 32 god comes again this time around jacob is wiser because pain can be a blessing there are certain things that only pain can bring and teach it's an uncomfortable truth but it's true hallelujah now he was prepared he had seen the value of an encounter with god and in chapter 32 the bible says he dismissed his wives he dismissed his cattle when he was alone a man came to him now watch the encounter and he held him and began to wrestle with that man and the man said leave me for the day breaketh and jacob said i will not let you go unless you bless me how did he bless him number one what is your name i am jacob he said thou shalt no more be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have had power with god and you have prevailed and then the bible says he touched the hollow you see that that he is able to stand strong independent of any aid is because there is a structure in him that is complete and god says i don't walk with men this way if i meet you complete there is nothing much i can do i will have to take away something from you that becomes your point of dependence on me and god called it a blessing i'm showing you how he blessed jacob so when god comes to bless you <laughs> one of the ways he blesses you is hold on he searches for what has been him before his arrival and that becomes what he's going to touch he does not touch it to destroy you he touches it to bless you because two sons depend on Abba. That's why the Bible says in following, make sure you only follow them who through faith and patience. If you don't find faith in their pursuit and patience, run away from them. Faith means that they had to place their trust on a government and authority higher than them. That in following people, discern how they got their results. 
did you find somewhere in their equation where they had to depend on god if you don't find it that is a risk so jacob received that blessing that would have called a curse he touched the whole of his tie and jacob became incomplete he became destabilized and now he blessed him when he blessed him the bible says the sun arose and he called that place peniel he says for i have seen god face to face and my life is preserved there are many of you that some of the things that may look like your point of achievement that god touched it was not necessarily the devil it was god luring you to bring you to a deeper place of dependence to say you've carried the narrative that it only takes a job to do well now it's been five years without a job and you've never begged have i proven to you that i am abba enough the moment the point is proven he will give you one job that will pay for that five years to mean that it was not about withholding it it was about teaching you something so that in the place of worship you can throw the job like your alabaster box and still worship and say job you met me in a relationship with someone prosperity you met me in a relationship with someone you are only a channel you cannot be abba you see let me tell you this everything that god gives you i don't know what it is about things and people there is an obsession to be god your job finances opportunities and they will attempt climbing that ladder to sit at the throne of your heart so god designs a system and brings you to a point where nothing you guard it with jealousy no matter what god brings around you you know that dependence is the law of sonship so when god gives you ministry when god gives you anointing when god gives you a voice in the place of worship you tell them do not come beyond this boundary this is me and my father thank you for the gift thank you for the anointing thank you for the fame but i want you to know that the reason why you came was because abba called you so the one who called you is the one my allegiance remains to can i tell you this when you get to a point of total dependence believe me when i tell you this when you get to a point of total dependence god can take someone's prayer request and bring it for you as a reward as a gift and just give it to you and he said god i don't remember praying for this and he says that's what happens when people depend on me back to our story luke chapter 4 is god speaking to someone was that luke chapter 4 the story of the prodigal son luke 15 verse 11 so you can see from this story that there were two sons are we together now for as long as they were under the authority of their father certain words were not mentioned number one lack there was no lack provided they were stewards now the boy look at this temptation may it never happen to you in jesus name verse 12 the bible says the young man i don't know who advised him but clearly those who advised him was the one he spent the money with is that true because every time you begin to take the decisions that negate the authority you are under there is another voice sponsoring it when adam fell god came to him in the cool of the day and said adam where art thou and he says i heard your voice but i hid because i was naked next question who told you you have submitted yourself to the influence of another voice so now this young boy probably would go and meet friends and they would tell him shame on you at your age you are still under the authority of your father and make him feel stupid for dependence not knowing that it was his dependence that was responsible for that honor and he went to his father and he said i am tired of having it in your name i want it in my name independence means i want it in my name let the credit for it go to me i am tired of singing a song and they clap for you i am tired of doing exploits and people keep giving you the credit i need to enjoy it too and because you see the character of god is that he gave you a will and he will honor it 
even at the expense of a man's eternal salvation god will allow him to choose so the father showing the character of god honor that request verse 13 and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and wasted his substance with riotous living the first mention the first decision he's taking in his life outside of the influence of his father was a stupid decision are you seeing that his results were not a proof of his understanding they were a proof of the covering and the authority of his father the first official decision he's taking alone is leading him into trouble the bible is mentioning words that should not have been associated with him waste there are many times when you see us, the result is not a true reflection of our intelligence. We are hiding behind the wisdom of the ancient of days. And our dependence on him makes us to look so wise. So when men are clapping for us, we know the truth about the story. And we can quietly go back and then publicly tell you, Hey, this result is not within the world of men. Men cannot go this far. There is the wisdom of the ancient moving through our frail minds and making it look like it's a product of our creativity. Can I tell you this? Master the law of sonship by having the unashamedness to let men know that behind the exploits around your life is the wisdom of the living God. Is God speaking to someone? 14, let's hurry up so we can pray. The Bible says when he had spent all insufficiency associated to ownership and associated with rebellion for as long as he was with his father there was no mention of these words now he had violated the law of dependence he wanted to feel he was a man not knowing that independence is proof that you are a child he began to be in want what scripture comes to your mind here if the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, look at the way this guy began to deteriorate. One decision after another, leading him, plunging down, down again. The Bible says he went and joined himself. So he was really interested in relationships, but not with his father. In the height of his pain, he felt that he would have to go and join himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his field oh dear this is a lesson whoever you join yourself with determines what really flows to you he joined himself with his father and the benevolence of the father was on him now he joined himself with a struggling citizen and the man said you met me don't think that things are all right whatever i have i can i will communicate according to my riches and the best i can give you is to send you to go and feed the swine he sent him into his field to go and feed the swine 16 and he would fain have filled his belly with the horse that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him absence of honor you see that now absence of favor because one of the biblical proofs of favor is that your hands will never be empty exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty exodus 3 21 the moment your hands are empty there is an explanation that the favor of god may not be at work in your life back to our story please i hope you love scriptures praise the lord we are learning now so that we'll pray the Bible says no man did give unto him. Now question, where...